This is the Getting Divorced Without Losing Your Mind podcast, where divorce coach Corey Shapiro helps you get creative and not reactive in your divorce. Tune in now to get the support you need to make it through this difficult time. Here's your divorce coach, Corey Shapiro. All right, welcome to the Getting Divorced Without Losing Your Mind podcast. This is Corey Shapiro. It's so good to be back at a normal podcast. We did have a lovely conversation last week with questionologist Warren Berger. I applied my divorce experience doing this for a few decades with his expertise in questioning, and I think it was a great blend. He left us with an amazing gift. The Question Sandwich, and I really suggest you watch it or listen to it if you prefer. If you're watching it, uh, we have a separate YouTube channel for conversations, but the link will be in our normal YouTube channel for the podcast. Uh, What is this episode about? Well, we're talking about energizing a case. That's where things move from rational, from collaborative, from cooperative to leverage. And there's mild, you know, energized to maximal uh, energizing a case. And it's really the dark arts of lawyering, especially in the divorce field and also in other fields. We see that as well. Um, But that's what we're dealing with today. And what's energizing me right now is going to the U.S. Open, uh, which is, for people who don't know, uh, at the end of August, three weeks out of the year, here out in Queens, right near Met Stadium, we have one of the best tournaments uh, in New York, one of the majors for tennis. And the first week of this three-week tournament is they call Fan Week. And what's wonderful about it is it's all free. There's wonderful activities, there's concerts, there's media events. So if you're just dabbling and want to do something and check out something new with your family, uh, check out Fan Week for the U.S. Open. Easy to get to by public transportation. Uh, Our quote this week is actually from uh, a retiring American player who just announced his retirement at the U.S. Open. His name is John Eisner. He played 17 years on the ATP Tour. Wow. Impressive. And he has the claim to fame of the longest match. He had a match, I believe in 2010, for over 11 hours. Let that sink in. 11 hours playing tennis at a super high level. I mean, a marathon, world-class marathon runners are two hours. Is that right? So two, four, what is it, like an Ironman of, uh, I mean, is it like an Ironman tennis match? It's crazy what he did. So he has that claim to frame. So I, because he's retiring, he gets our quote. His quote is, my marriage and my career are my two top priorities. Way to focus us. John Isner, and thank you for all the joy you have given us over the years. All right, moving to our question. It's from Felix. And if you have a question for our podcast, uh, something is going on in your divorce or pre-divorce planning, you want to have a different perspective, maybe a more creative perspective, and you don't necessarily yet want to you know, go for a consultation to an attorney and you just want to bounce ideas around sort of like an office hours, if you will, send us your question. And uh, you could do that by answer, uh, asking a question straight from uh, your browser. You can go to gettingdivorced.org and you can find the link to ask a question. Hopefully we can answer it on the podcast. All right, our question from Felix, it goes like this. I'm really striving to settle my divorce amicably and fairly. And I haven't been able to settle it. We're now in court and my spouse hired an attorney, but so far I've been representing myself. We've tried to figure out child support. That's the only issue. We don't have really any assets. Uh, However, I recently received a series of discovery demands or other demands from my spouse's attorney. 
I received document demands, a witness list, electronic media request, deposition request, and expert witness disclosure. Uh, does this seem excessive considering we have a straightforward divorce? We don't have any assets. And the only issue is child support. Well, Felix, you know, it depends is the short answer. And I'll tell you why. There's two ways to think about this. The first way is, yes, uh, we are entitled, you know, the other side's entitled to get information. Uh, you're also entitled to get information, financial information. I mean, that's really what uh, a divorce is in a sense. It's getting a lot of financial information from the other. Now, if you have a simple W-2 job working for a reputable company, let's say you're working for Amazon and you get a W-2 salary, it's pretty easy to determine your child support if you've been there for a while. On the other hand, if your income uh, is a little inconsistent or you have your own business or your income is self-created, maybe in a family business, things get more difficult. So on one way of looking at it, yes, they're entitled to discovery. Are they in dis is it necessary at this stage to ask for a witness, uh, your experts, a witness list? Uh, if, 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 I think it was experts and um, a deposition request, all of that. I, I don't necessarily know. It might be premature, uh, but eventually depends on where the court uh, case goes, maybe. But another way to look at it, and I already previewed it, is maybe this attorney is energizing a case. Energizing a case. And what that means is they're applying pressure to you. They're applying pressure to you to ensure that if you're going to go further in this process, things are going to get difficult, right? Things are going to get difficult and your budget's going to really increase. The time's going to increase doing it. The energy is going to be really increased. The money you're applying to this. So whatever settlement position you're on, and whatever that delta is, you know, the space between your settlement number and their settlement number, they're really trying to close that gap. And they're trying to do it in a way that brings you closer to their side. And that's how, what you do when you want to energize a case. A couple of responses could be mirroring. You could just send back all those documents and serve the same thing they served on you. You can serve it on them, Right could do that. Um, and that obviously just increases the budget for everyone. And as you know, lawyers bill by the hour. So maybe that is what the attorney wants. Um, so you're in a difficult space. I think at this point, it may be wise to at least consult with an attorney to make sure you are going to respond to these discovery uh, demands. So you're not going to prejudice your case. Because if you go back to court, and you didn't respond to these uh, requests appropriately, that could become the focus of the case. And that's going to maybe upset the court. And then if the court has to make a decision, that's some th a factor the court will use to maybe go against you. And a lot of this all comes down to credibility. So unless the documents really do speak for themselves um, and the judge has any discretion you don't want to upset the court. You want to do things appropriately. And what this attorney seems to be doing is forcing your hand, forcing you to at least consult with an attorney to make sure that um, you're getting some guidance and doing things correctly. All right. In divorce news, Felix, this really is for you or for people in this situation. People in this situation where, you know, you just want a collaborative divorce. You just want things simple. You know, why can't things just be, you know, for example, equal custody, we just share things, we make about the same, let's just move on. Well, that's not how things always work. And there was a case, a celebrity divorce, a few years ago, it shows a good example of energizing a case. And this is the Christy Brinkley fourth, this is her fourth marriage, fourth divorce against Peter Cook out in the Hamptons in New York. And there were some details in that divorce that came out that really painted Peter in a bad light. 
And it's all out there. If you're really interested, you could Google it. I'm not going to discuss it at this point because Peter Cook is a father and it's just not necessary on this podcast. But Christie made some allegations against Peter. And basically what Christie wanted um, was to be the sole custodian, the sole custodian of the children, of the children. They had a prenup. So the financial issues weren't as important. It was really custody. And Christie believed Peter had poor judgment because of some lifestyle choices he made. And uh, they couldn't settle their case. And when you can't settle your case, you go to trial. They both had big time attorneys. And the breaking point came when Peter wanted this trial uh, over, I believe, custody issues to be private, to be private. So the details about what he was doing or not doing would not fall into earshot of his children or anyone else. And Christie wanted to apply maximum leverage to get her position. She believed or her attorney believed by doing that, it would uh, really increase the chances of Peter to settle. Unfortunately for Peter and his children, it took about five or six days of trial, I believe, before he did settle. But all of these allegations came out. It's, it was in the public purview. And that is a good example of a masterclass at the maximum level of what happens when someone energizes a case. So let me leave with a positive perspective. So if this is happening to you, I'm just going to give you three options. Three options. Okay. Option one is you can do the same. And that's mutually assured destruction. That's what I'm going to call that. They come after you with a frame. You have to come back with a counter frame, just like boxing. Someone punches you, you got to punch back with a counter punch. And if the issues are important enough to you, the stakes are high enough to you, maybe that's maybe that's a uh, a technique. Okay. That's a big budget way of doing things, but that might be your only choice. So that's number one, mutually assured destruction. They hit you, you hit them back. Okay. Number two, you can settle and settle on terms. You don't necessarily, uh, you're not going to love these terms and, but you're not going to hate them. You're not going to hate them. You're going to like them parts of them, other parts you really don't like, but some parts you may like better than others. And it's that mixture that maybe judges can help you with, or if you're out of that frame, very experienced collaborative attorneys, that's the mixture with mediation, you know, trading things of unequal value and finding that sweet spot. That's a hard thing to do. That's the middle ground. That's number two. All right. Number three, this is the roll up your sleeve. This is the ignore the noise. You know, when these allegations are coming at you, it's hard to ignore the noise. You ignore the noise. And you start preparing. You're doing the hard work necessary to convince the judge, usually just a judge in, in divorce cases, to rule in your favor. Uh, you really have to know the facts well. You really have to know the law well. And you have to hope for the best. And you got to be prepared to go the distance. Okay? But if there's something case ending that's so upsetting to you that, that may come out at trial, like what happened to Peter Cook, then maybe number three is not the right option. Okay. So that's my positive perspective. Uh, in closing, if you found this podcast useful, why not subscribe to our monthly newsletter? You can do that at gettingdivorced.org. Until our paths cross again, be creative, not reactive. Thank you for tuning in to the Getting Divorced Without Losing Your Mind podcast with divorce coach Corey Shapiro. Divorce can be a difficult and overwhelming process, but it doesn't have to be. Corey's book, Getting Divorced Without Losing Your Mind, is here to help you gain clarity, composure, and a strategic mindset. Get it now as an ebook on Amazon or an audiobook on Audible and unlock the power of these resources to make more informed decisions and gain better understanding of the process. This podcast offers general information only. It cannot replace legal advice. If you need tailored advice, contact an attorney licensed to practice in your area. 